Hi everyone, it's Miss Leanna and Miss Lindisha from Friends of the Environment. We're back with another water lesson where today we'll be talking about land uses and water pollution. We will discover what land use means both generally and in the Bahamas specifically. We will also learn major pollutants of our freshwater sources in the Bahamas and where they come from. Can you think of what land use is? What do you think our major sources of water pollution are for our freshwater sources? What is land use? Land use is the characterization of the function of land and how it is used. People can adapt certain areas of land to suit their needs, but the natural land determines what it can be used for, i.e., if it is suitable for a community, a development, an environment, or otherwise. According to Index Mundi, a comprehensive data portal, the Bahamas' land use is divided into three different categories of use based on the terrain of the land. These categories are agricultural land, forest, and other. Here we are looking at a pie chart that explains land use in the Bahamas as of 2016. Agricultural land is broken down into arable land, which is land that is defined by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, also known as FAO, as land under temporary crops, temporary meadows for mowing or pasture, land under market or kitchen gardens, and land that is temporarily fallow, which means if it's left for too long of a period to be restored. Arable land is cultivated for crops such as wheat, maize, and rice, which all can be replanted in the same land after harvest. Land use for permanent crops are cultivated for crops that are not replanted at the end of harvesting season such as fruit trees, vines, and flowering shrubs. Permanent pastures are considered land use for at least five years or more. This land can be land that was cultivated or land that is natural. Forests are considered land that spans more than half a hectare or also an acre with trees higher than five meters, which is about 16 feet, and a canopy cover more than 10%. There are three types of forests in the Bahamas, coppice forest, pine forest, and mangrove forest. Other land use is classified as developed areas, roads, and other transportation features, barren land, which is less than a third of the area has vegetation, or wasteland. How does land use affect water quality? All type of land uses have some sort of effect on the quality of water, whether positive or negative. In the Bahamas where groundwater is our primary source of fresh water, it is especially important to monitor negative effects from certain categories of land use. Land use can affect both groundwater and surface water. Inorganic contaminants can be found in groundwater either because they are naturally occurring in the geology, in this case our limestone bedrock, or have been caused by activities such as mining, industry, or agriculture. Aluminum is naturally found in some rocks. Chloride, on the other hand, usually enters groundwater from salt water intrusion or industrial waste. Copper and mercury can also enter from industrial waste or mining. Fossil fuel combustion can also emit mercury. Nitrate in the form of nitrogen enters mainly from sewage and fertilizer, but is also found naturally in the ocean, in freshwater systems, and other ecosystems. Even naturally occurring minerals, organic contaminants within our limestone bedrock can pollute our groundwater source as well. Products such as plastics, rubbers, dyes, inks, etc., contain what is known as volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, which can be absorbed into the land upon production, affecting our groundwater source. Pesticides can enter the ground as herbicides, insecticides, and plasticizers, which are used as sealants and linings, usually entering from improper waste disposal. So what is water pollution? 
Pollution is defined as the contamination of air, water, or land by pollutants that affect both environmental and biological health. When pollutants enter our freshwater sources, usually by human activities, it degrades our freshwater quality, which can be detrimental to our health and the health of our ecosystems. There are some common groundwater pollutants that have an effect on our freshwater resources. There are four common groundwater pollutants. These pollutants are most important to focus on since the majority of the Bahamas' freshwater source is groundwater. Four groundwater contaminants that we will highlight are nitrogen, bacteria, pesticides, and volatile organic compounds. Both the types and amounts of these contaminants are based on land use in each particular area. Nitrate. Nitrate is a form of nitrogen and is an inorganic compound that can contaminate groundwater if there is an overabundance of it. Nitrate originates from domestic land use, which was other, such as sewage tanks and lawn fertilizers, as well as from agricultural land use, from crop fertilizers and manure. If we have heavy rainfall or during irrigation, which is the watering of crop fields and lawns, nitrate from fertilizers or nitrate that seeps out of sewage tanks can affect both surface and groundwater systems. Bacteria are pathogens or microorganisms that cause disease. The main pathogen in water pollution is bacteria, which sources mostly from animals in the form of fecal waste. Malfunctioning septic systems in residential areas, as well as manure from livestock on farmlands can be sources of pollution. Bacteria originates from mainly agricultural land use as well as domestic land use or other. If this land use is properly taken care of with proper waste management systems, pathogens are less likely to enter our ground and surface water resources. Pesticides. Pesticides are used in both agricultural land use as well as developed land use or other to kill unwanted pests which can include insects, rodents, ants, etc. The types of pesticides used is based on the land use and can differ between agricultural and developed land. For example, in residential areas, it's more likely to observe pesticides being used for rodent control, and in agricultural areas, it's more likely to see pesticides used to control insects and fungi in crops. Volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, are chemicals that are emitted into the atmosphere as gases, but mainly enter groundwater systems through industrial and commercial land use. Their physical and chemical properties allow them to be emitted as all of the states of matter. One of the major sources of VOCs entering groundwater sources are oil or fuel spills. There is a direct relationship between VOCs being detected in groundwater and developmental areas. Point and non-point source pollution. We can determine how land use is affecting our water pollution by identifying which pollutants are from point sources or non-point sources. Point source pollution are pollutants that can be traced back clearly to where they originated from from a specific location. These pollutants enter the freshwater source directly. The major point source pollution is from sewage treatment plants and industrial sites. Whereas non-point source pollution is a combination of pollutants from multiple sources that cannot be clearly identified. The major non-point source pollution is typically from runoff, which can accumulate pollutants from multiple sources such as golf courses, farmlands, parking lots, etc. This makes it difficult to identify the source of these pollutants since they are all combined. Point source pollutants are easier to regulate, which makes them less of a culprit to contributing to water pollution due to the regulations put in place at these sources, such as at sewage treatment plants. This is an example of a power plant that was once proposed for East Grand Bahama back in 2013. Would a power plant be considered point source or non-point source pollution? It's definitely 
point source. We can identify where the pollutants come from. This is a photo of the Bahamas Oil Refining Company International Limited, also known as Borco, at Freeport Industrial Port. It is the largest oil storage facility in the Caribbean. Would an oil refinery be considered point source or non-point source pollution? The answer is point source. We can identify where the pollutants come from if there is an oil spill. This is showing runoff from multiple areas, roads, parking lots, forests, entering a freshwater stream. Would this be considered point source or non-point source pollution? The answer is non-point source. There is no way to trace the pollutants that have entered this stream back to its original source because there are too many different pollutants and origins combined. These pollutants that we have discussed affect both our groundwater and our saltwater. On major areas of developed land use, such as roads, resorts, stadiums, etc., runoff is likely one of the main causes of pollution from land use in saltwater, although this has not yet been analyzed in the Bahamas. In addition, we can see how saltwater intrusion affects our groundwater table in our country. Contaminants from our salt water from processes like runoff can enter our groundwater table through our porous limestone bedrock. This is important to understand as the Bahamas is evolving to use salt water as a major source of fresh water in our country, which we will discuss further shortly. The Bahamas Water and Sewage Corporation, WSC, is responsible for monitoring water quality that is pumped throughout the island to its customers. There are two main methods of ensuring clean, healthy water quality are their wastewater treatment plants as well as their reverse osmosis systems. With proper sites, like the one pictured above, and regulations, wastewater can be disposed of properly and water pumping stations are at less risk of pollution and contamination. How is this pollution treated? Reverse osmosis, also known as desalination, is a common method used to treat water pollution. In this method of water treatment, water is taken from the ocean and pressure forces this water through a semi-permeable membrane, which means certain substances can easily pass through the membrane, but others can't. Usually, the solvent, which is the liquid, is most easily passed through the membrane, leaving behind pollutants, which are also the solutes, which filters the water. The solvent flows from the more concentrated side, which is to the left in this photo, to the less concentrated side, which is to the right in this photo, leaving clean water on the right side after being passed through the membrane. While most of our fresh water in the Bahamas comes from groundwater, we also have a large reverse osmosis system that not only filters the salt water itself, but pollutants that can also be found in it from runoff and other sources of pollution. Reverse osmosis requires a large amount of energy in order to be successful. However, there is a need for high cost processes such as this due to the scarcity of fresh water in the Bahamas. The three major islands that have significant amounts of fresh water resources from groundwater are Andres, Great Abaco Island, and Grand Bahama. Rainfall is variable across the archipelago and is very seasonal, therefore considered an unreliable source. RO systems are becoming very popular in the Bahamas as a major source of reliable freshwater. The Bahamas faced its greatest natural disaster to date on September 1st, 2019, Hurricane Dorian. The extent of the damage was very obvious above ground, but also greatly affected our groundwater systems on Abaco and Grand Bahama Islands for reliable, clean, and safe fresh water. After such a major disaster, one of the immediate resources needed is clean water. From the destruction of local water resource companies, like the Water and Sewage Corporation in the Bahamas, nonprofits from the US stepped in and helped our country tremendously. Water Mission is one of them. Water Mission provides an amazing example of an RO system like the ones we use on other islands in the Bahamas such as New Providence and most recently Eleuthera. 
Water Mission has become a major source of fresh water for many residents in Abaco and Grand Bahama after the destruction of Dorian, and many rely on them daily for fresh water for cleaning, cooking, and drinking. In Marsh Harbor, Abaco, Water Mission has a large osmosis system producing more than 30,000 gallons of safe water daily. There are also four smaller RO systems collectively producing an additional 2,000 gallons of safe water daily. Here's how we can help water pollution from our land use. The main land use that we have a direct relationship with is our residential area where we live. There are a number of ways we can do our part, the most obvious being using the five R's, reduce, reuse, repurpose, refuse, and recycle. By following these five R's, we produce less waste, therefore reducing our demand of purchasing products that are manufactured on major sites that contribute to water pollution. It also helps to raise awareness to others on why this is important. In following these five R's, we can learn the difference between biodegradable and non-biodegradable items as well. Choosing biodegradable items typically means that we are choosing products made from plant and animal products that can easily be decomposed if they end up in nature. This helps us to avoid water pollution that may be beyond our control. For example, improper disposal of our household garbage. Using environmentally friendly products such as environmentally friendly pesticides and paints can help with the amount and type of pollutants that enter our water sources. Following sustainable building practices would mean that builders are increasing efficiency in water and energy under contract, using eco-friendly building materials as well as reducing the amount of waste and emissions in the atmosphere. Finally, following proper waste management and disposal guidelines are both necessary to ensure we are abiding by laws set out by our government and the Water and Sewage Corporation of the Bahamas for a cleaner water supply and a pristine country. This means no practices such as illegal dumping or unsupervised shallow dug wells that can compromise our water table. Do you have any questions? Let your teacher know if you have any questions about this presentation or feel free to reach out to us at Friends of the Environment.